Good evening, everybody. Sometimes one does despair of today's youth. To them, concepts such as honor, duty, and self-restraint are as foreign as a Frenchman and no more acceptable. <laughs> On the other hand, of course, it is important not to judge people too harshly. We were all young once, and although we may not have attended raves, <laughs> I seem to remember that Saturday morning at the pictures could get pretty wild. <laughs> that he who has never chucked a gobstopper at John Wayne during the kissy bit <laughs> cast the first stone. For young people, as we shall see, are like the last banana in the fruit bowl. <laughs> not all bad. I tell you what, I'd be glad when they fixed up our showers and toilet. I hate sharing the blokes. There's a pair of jocks in that locker that's developing its own ecosystem. It's not what you need when you're feeling delicate. Had a little drinky last night, did we? Just a bit. My tongue's got so much fur on it, I may need a license to keep it domestically. <laughs> Drinking like that's terribly bad for you, you know, Maggie. Really, Pat? And there was me thinking that having a brain like a pickled walnut and a mouth like a rat's bum was a bit of a health cure. <laughs> Instead of poisoning your body, you should be concentrating on rejuvenating your physical and sensual sides. Oh, the way I feel this morning, you couldn't rejuvenate my sensual side if you chucked me into a bath full of Chippendales and asked me to find the soap. <laughs> Blimey! Sharing the gents with a load of women, it's a disgrace! The place will stink like the perfume counter at Boots. <laughs> They'll be in there. Dibby, dabby, lippy, lappy, powder puffing, barnet puffing, squirty, squirty. Only be a minute, I've just got to regrout me crow's feet. <laughs> I've got all this at home, you know. I'm talking about alternative healing, Maggie. I've just joined a well woman group. You can do rebirthing, reflexology, shiatsu massage. You have to let it all out. Please, Pat, I'm having enough trouble keeping it all down. <laughs> and if you haven't got time for shiatsu, just have an enema. You can do it at home in five minutes with an ordinary garden hose. Tweezering and plucking and using my bick on her legs and slapping the glandular oils of some dead whale around like it didn't cost 15 quid a jar, which I have to bleed in her. Well, I'm off the booze now anyway. My little sister's coming to stay. Oh, that's nice. No, it's not. She's completely boring. Goody flipping two shoes. If she sees me with so much as a half of Cydrax, she'll tell me Mum, who'll immediately ring up in floods and read the entire Koran onto my answer phone. <laughs> Perhaps your sister would like to come along to my rebirthing group. You recreate the moment you emerged from your mother's womb. Oh, I'll see if I can persuade her. Maybe she'll come out a bit more interesting second time around. I shall come on, Tina. She says I'm just going to have five minutes on the bum wobbling machine. Then she leaves the top of the toothpaste. Blimey, Fowler, I thought at least at work we could keep the birds out of the bog. Sharing lockers is brilliant. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm actually going to be changing in the same room as Constable Habib. But not at the same time. True, but it's a step in the right direction, isn't it? <laughs> right, that's it, you lot. Come on, time's up. Get out of it! Good morning, Inspector Grimm. Oh, it's still morning, is it? Blimey, I thought it was late. <laughs> Evening at least, or else sometime next year. And doesn't time fly? Why, when you're hanging around outside the bog, waiting for a bunch of women to stop funnying about? You do get yourself worked up, don't you, Inspector? You really should try and diffuse your tension. Have you thought about irrigating your colon? Not really. I don't do a lot of gardening. Inspector Grimm, it is eight. 51 and 42 seconds. With respect, if you consult your rota, I think you'll find that mail time begins at 8.52. I told you, Fowler. Women, all the same, totally 
toiletarily territorial. <laughs> Inspector Grimm, we don't like this situation any more than you do, and with better reason. What better reason? Lots of better reason. Name a better reason. Well, we've been properly toilet trained for a start. Yeah. <laughs> you lot seem to think you're supposed to stand on the bog and aim outwards. <laughs> Drips! Women are obsessed with drips! I say, Tina, wear a pair of slippers! Please, really, really, now, please, please, now, 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 please. Really. The situation is as it is, and we must simply make the best of it. I've scheduled a meeting with the regional auditor, but he is notoriously tighter than an Italian tenor's trouser buttons, <laughs> so I hold out little hope for extra funds this financial year. Clearly, I cannot take money from our crime-fighting activities. Why? We never solve any burglaries. Why don't we investigate half as many, sir? We'd cut our failure rate by 50% and afford new toilets into the bargain. <laughs> Such cynicism is depressing in one so young, Abby. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for my morning movement. <laughs> Look what I've got, Frank. Some of that new male Calvin Klein perfume. Dead cool, dead street. Really gets the babes horny. You know, I reckon when Constable Habib gets a whiff of this, she'll say, Wah! Climb aboard, big boy, and fall at my feet. <laughs> Kevin, it'll take more than a whiff of perfume to make Maggie Habib fall at your feet. Maybe you should try chloroform, eh? <laughs> it's supposed to be evocative of a man's testicles. No, I don't mean that. What is it that blokes have that makes them sexy? Mm, sunglasses? <laughs> no, it's close to testicles, only a little bit longer. <laughs> Testosterone, Kevin. Look at it, wrapped in a towel. <laughs> Give us a splash. I've got lager seeping out of my pores. In the boozer till two. Sixteen cans of special brew and nothing to eat but peanuts. I could have pebble dashed the pub. <laughs> two? Well, that's way past closing time. <sighs> closing times for plebs, not us. The lock-in is a traditional copper's perk. It's like sticking your siren on when you're late for dinner. We're having another lock-in on Friday. How about coming out? Uh. You be careful, son. Once when I was starting off as a constable, I got drinking with some other silly young coppers when suddenly in walked our chief inspector. I looked at my watch. It was one o'clock. Quick as a flash, I put a pork pie on my head and pretended to be a table. And what did the inspector do? He ordered a pint. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh. You see, Kev, no problem. There's a big illegal late-night drink this Friday. Lots of the boys are coming out. You've got to come out, too. Yes, well, I don't know about that, Gary. As a policeman, I just don't feel comfortable breaking the law. I mean, I know that sounds stupid, Look, but I... mate, <laughs> coppers stick together. <laughs> and if we have to bend the rules, then we do it together. That's the police culture. And you'll do a lot better on the force if you admit you're one of us from the start. So you come out, all right? <laughs> I'm out on Friday. Um, Patricia, uh, regarding the current dysfunctional nature of the non-male person's locker room... The ladies lose, yes. Hmm. 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 Well, <coughs> I wonder if you could inform your compatriots of the female variety that I am, of course, arranging for the ladies' um... You know, the ladies' um... Machine <laughs> to be moved. The what? The ladies' machine. You know the um, the mechanised purveyor of um, <laughs> purificatory dressings. <laughs> Swabs. <laughs> Sanitationary uh, compresses. Applications, uh, internal and external. <laughs> Ladies for the use of, as and when required. 
traditionally <coughs> on a monthly basis. Raymond, there's nothing embarrassing about time. No, 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 no. No, what an idea. Blimey. Embarrassed. Ha. I talk about them all the time. Really not talking about them get quite boring on the subject, as a matter of fact. No, no. Anyway, the, um, well, the, um, thingy machine will, will be relocated in the male locker room in a suitably discreet darkened corner. <laughs> Unless, of course, you'd rather we put it in the cellar, you know, to save embarrassment. No, the locker room will be fine. Oh, good, good. So in the broom cupboard behind the cistern it goes, then. <laughs> The vile scourge of drugs has arrived in Gasforth. Some people won't admit it, but I for one am not going to bury my head in an ostrich. <laughs> Kids are already taking E, openly, in clubs, and that is only the thin end of the bush. <laughs> Today, it's E. Next week, it might be F. <laughs> Possibly even G. <laughs> now then, tomorrow night, there is going to be a rave at the old gasworks. CID officers, led by Detective Inspector Derek Grimm, in the person of myself, <laughs> for that is me, <laughs> will be in attendance, and also, it is where we will be. That is all. Further information as and if and when and as and if required. <laughs> Drugs. Drugs. What is wrong with young people today? With their uppers, downers, poppers, toppers, <laughs> speed, whiz, crack, junk, smack, splosh, zing, bonk, bar, <laughs> Oops, I've just destroyed the family brain cell. <laughs> Can't they amuse themselves without chemical stimulation? Haven't they heard of Monopoly? <laughs> I suppose they're just not as boring. I mean, as sensible as you were, sir. They're looking for something more exciting. Exciting? Have you ever had hotels on Mayfair and Park Lane? <laughs> you can make a fortune. A damn sight more exciting than filling your head with chemicals and prancing about drinking Lucasade for eight hours. I can see nothing exciting about that whatsoever. Well, that's not quite true. I do recall that as a youngster I could get pretty worked up at the prospect of a glass of Lucasade. But great plates of wobbly custard. Why this need for sensory stimulants? When I was an adolescent, my idea of a major sensory stimulant was sucking on a fisherman's friend. <laughs> and I said something amusing, Constable Goody. <laughs> oh, yes, sir, definitely. <laughs> really? Then perhaps you'd like to explain the joke to me. <laughs> yes, I will. Well, sir, you said that you were stimulated by sucking on a fisherman's friend. <laughs> I think that's very funny. <laughs> I see. And why do you find it funny, Constable Goody? Well, they're horrible, aren't they? Everyone knows that. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up this town, Boyle. Drugs are the effluence of society. And I'm the toilet duck. <laughs> I'll show these bloody kids. When Grim of Gasforth puts his backside on the line, they can't just stick two fingers up. <laughs> yeah. If kids want to destroy their bodies, why don't they drink ten pints of lager like sensible adults? What's wrong with being bored, anyway? The rest of us have to sit at home in front of the telly. Why shouldn't they? I can tell you what, sir. Me and some of the lads have organised a lock-in after tomorrow night's raid. Why don't you get in on it? Well, I don't know, Boyle. I don't normally do that sort of thing. Oh, come on, sir. You spend all evening chasing drug addicts and you can't even have a little drinky at the end of it. That can't be right now, can it, eh? <laughs> hey, Kevin! What are you doing? 
Just giving you a whiff of my testosterone. I shall speak to your mother. Oh, Maggie, 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 Maggie. Can I talk to you about something? It's just that I've got a sort of moral dilemma. You see, Gary Boyle has been going on at me about coming out. He wants you to come out? Yes. He wants me to come out and admit that I'm one of them. Well, what's it got to do with him? Tell him to bog off. No, no, no. You see, in so many ways, I'd feel that I'd actually quite like to, you know. But it isn't easy, what with being a policeman and everything. Oh, I see. Mm. Well, whatever you decide to do, Kevin, I want you to know I think you've been really brave. And I really admire you. <laughs> this perfume is sex dynamite. I'm going to dunk my trousers in it. Do you want a splash? Listen, son. A woman likes to smell a man as nature intended. Sweat, Guinness and pickled onions. You can't bottle that. I'm off for my rebirthing. Ah, yes, rebirthing. Just remember to pick me up at ten. Patricia, I'm hardly likely to leave a newborn baby to fend for itself in the sports centre car park. No, am I? There's one reborn every minute. You don't think much of Sergeant Dawkins' interest in alternative inner healing, do you, sir? Well, why is everybody searching for this something inside them? Patricia and her quest for the inner woman? Children and their drugs? It's an alternative culture now, sir. People are asking questions. They want to know who they are. Then they should damn well look at their passports. <laughs> alternative culture. <laughs> I remember when our idea of alternative culture was turning over to ITV. <laughs> People have too much choice these days. Did you know that you can get an almond Mars bar? <laughs> an almond Mars bar? Mars bars got by for over 50 years without almonds in them. Yes, sir. They've put caramel in the whispers. <laughs> we live in a debauched, hedonistic age. Young people are addicted to pleasure. Not all young people, sir. My little sister's addicted to organised religion, exams and netball. Mm. She sounds like a very fine young woman. Proof that not all young people are decadent wastrels. Oh, Maggie. A young lady for you says she's your sister. Hello, Maggie. Hello, Nazia. This is my little sister, Nazia, sir. Ah, splendid. Splendid. Welcome to Gasforth, Nazia. I'm sure you'll love it. We have a museum, a small library, and a fascinating 18th century stone horse trough. <laughs> Stuff that. As soon as I got my glad rags on, I'm out raving. You better change if you want to come too, Mags. Look like a right toss pot in that pig's costume. <laughs> I brought you your milk. Can you not be too long learning to walk because I'm parked on a meter? Thank you, Raymond. I'm only five seconds old and already my innocence is gone. <laughs> Make yourself at home, why don't you? All right, if I smoke. Well, you haven't started smoking cigarettes, have you? Just grass. Nazia, go and flush that down the toilet right now. You realise it's actually my duty to arrest you. Go on, then. Or at least tell Mum. You wouldn't. Just get rid of it now. <laughs> oh. One minute late. Very sorry, Maggie. That's all right, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to pry. Yes. But I was wondering whether you thought any more about your coming out. Well, yes, I have. Lots. But it's very confusing, you know. Sometimes I swing one way, sometimes the other. <laughs> oh, I see. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Morning, doll. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was up all night at a lock-in, had to shower off. Lovely. Very refreshing. Hey, I found some lovely scented soap in there. Peach shampoo and sea fresh deodorant. I like having birds in our bogs. <laughs> well, I could shag myself. <laughs> so, 
Don't forget I've got my reflexology this evening, Raymond. Ah, yes. Reflexology. Which one's that again? It's a terrific shortcut to all body well-being. Every part of you is represented on the sole of the foot, so any pain or uptightness can be alleviated by firmly massaging the foot. So here is the liver and the colon and the buttocks. And, uh, and where is the foot? <laughs> I, I mean, supposing I, I had a really sore foot. <laughs> how, would you, how would you soothe my foot? <laughs> By grabbing my foot and sticking your thumbs into my foot? Raymond, do I ask you to logically justify your covering the kitchen table with a balsa wood model of a Lancaster bomber? No, but I'd be quite happy to. <laughs> Constable Boyle. For the final time, if you're going to use my soap, could you please remove your hairs from it once you've finished? Don't be so squeamish. It's just benign, non-volatile, dead cell matter. It is benign, non-volatile, dead cell matter that grew out of your scrotum. <laughs> and I hate it. How do you do it? I could have stuffed a mattress by now. Each day I gouge a small toupee off the soap, and the next day it's back, looking like a member of the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Inspector Fowler, I would like to lodge a formal protest against having to share a locker room with a gruesome fallout from Constable Boyle's rapidly balding bodily parts. <laughs> this situation really is most intolerable. But unless I can get some extra cash out of the regional auditor, a man who does not recognise the verb to spend, <laughs> then I'm afraid we're all stuck in the same lavatory till Christmas. No fannying about, and above all, no fannying about. <laughs> we assemble at 0, 11.30, 100 hours, p.m. <laughs> in the evening. That is all. Let's go, go, go. Big raid, this. Quite exciting. Oh, well, we get some dealers, not just silly kids. Do you fancy a bit of chewing gum to calm your nerves? <laughs> it's a new brand. Fresh and easy. <laughs> Got it out of the machine in the locker room. Sounds great. <laughs> Gives you a great, fresh feel all day. <laughs> Helps you get on with life. And no leaking. <laughs> Which is great, isn't it? Because I often dribble a bit if I try and chew and watch television at the same time. Oh, yes. Good sitting sponge bag, you imbecile boy. Which way are you going? Sorry, I'm so sorry. Sir, with respect, I think you should be a bit more understanding with Kevin. He's a bit distracted, you see. The thing is, he's told me that he's coming out. <laughs> Coming out? Do you mean coming out as a Guardian reader would understand the term? Absolutely, sir. Oh, I see. Well, I must go out of my way to put him at his ease. <coughs> now then, Goody. Um, I've asked you to come and see me on a matter about which I feel no embarrassment. <coughs> no embarrassment whatsoever. Um, Constable Habib has informed me that you're worried about, about, um, coming out. Well. <laughs> I suppose it has been on my mind, sir, yes. Well, you mustn't worry yourself unduly, good. That's good, sir, because Gary Boyle says that having a sly quickie after work is a police tradition. <laughs> he said that? Oh, yes. He says that if a bloke can't get a couple of stiff ones down his neck after work, then what's the point of being a copper? <laughs> he reckons that the pub lock-in is all part of police culture. Pub lock-in? <laughs> you mean you've been asked to come out for an illegal drink? That's what's been worrying you? Yes, CID do it all the time. I'm really pleased it doesn't bother you. I'll tell you what, I'll be stuck into the Malibu at the Frock and Truncheon tonight. <laughs> 
can't do, you appalling youth. You'll be stuck in a cell tomorrow morning. I'm aware that there are certain nod-and-a-wink customs in which CID officers ignore the law, but I will not allow the corruption of my officers. Quite frankly, I preferred you when you were a homosexual. <laughs> I want urine from all this lot. Would somebody kindly take the urine? <laughs> Check their eyeballs. If the pupils are dislocated, nick them. Look for the signs of addiction. A distant stare, regular truancy, loss of appetite at mealtimes. Boy, to me! You didn't get rid of it, did you? I'll never forgive you for this, Nazia. All right! Those who have not been arrested are free to continue to gnaw away at the fabric of society. The rest of you with me. Let's go, go, go. Oh, oh no. No excuse, sir. I was protecting my sister. You understand that I'm going to have to charge you? Yes, sir. You fool, Constable. What madness possessed you? She's my little sister, sir. My mum would have died. She'd be... Go to your desk, Constable. Derek. Constable Habib is by far and away my best officer. She already represents a public investment of many thousands of pounds. What are you suggesting, Inspector Fowler? I am suggesting that we do not charge her. She has a fine career ahead of her, and because of one insane moment of filial loyalty... I don't believe I'm hearing this. Inspector High and Mighty Snooty Snotty Oity Tighty Fowler wants me to break the law. I know! I know. But she was just trying to help her little sister. And when her little sister is a drug baron defending an armoured crack house with a shoulder held missile launcher, <laughs> will it be all right to help her then? No. I don't like it. But I know my duty. We're charging her. It's been a long night. Right, Boyle, what about that drink we were discussing? Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome, Boyle. We can settle up later. <laughs> I reckon this raid might mean promotion for you, sir. Well, I can't deny I am rather expecting a call from a grateful chief constable. Ah, I can't see anything going wrong with that. Hey, unless we get raided. <laughs> all right, you all. You're all under arrest. Out through the box, sir. Old copper's trick. The problem with old copper's tricks, Constable Boyle, is that old coppers know them. <laughs> Don't do me for this, Fowler. I've never done anything like it before. A conviction would ruin my career. Never mind, Inspector Grimm. It was never a very promising one. <laughs> Unlike Constable Habib's. You can't compare withholding evidence of drugs. 
with a friendly little lock in. Really? I think you'll find that I can. <laughs> also, I think you'll find that the promotions board will be inclined to view any criminal conviction as something of a blot on a policeman's record. All right. I won't charge Happy. In that case, I won't charge you or Boyle. I've got a couple of outstanding parking tickets, sir. You think you can get me off those? I'm terribly sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Glockenspiel, but I've just been assembling the relevant financial reports regarding the ladies' locker room. No rush. You won't get a penny out of me anyway. I took the liberty of making myself a mug of Bovril whilst I was waiting. Your very good health. Bovril? Yes. My favourite beverage. Nutritious and, above all, cheap. I saw that cube on your desk. <laughs> so I made free with your kettle. No, oh, don't worry, I've left you half. <laughs> Quick, get a requisition slip. Mr Glockenspiel says we can have as many lavatories as we like. <laughs> in fact, he's offered to put in jacuzzis in a steam room. <laughs> also, he's asked for kebabs, pizzas and 15 king-size Mars bars. No almonds. <laughs> Let's talk toilets. <laughs>